Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Philip G, and we're back with another Bible study. I appreciate you guys joining in with me today. Today, we're going to jump right into the topic, and the topic is, what is the Garden of Eden? And so we're going to be talking about the Garden for a little while. Now, I don't know exactly how long, uh, but a little while, because I think it's in very like imperative that we have a thorough understanding of the Garden of Eden. Because when Jesus came, Jesus came to restore mankind back to its original intent. Like he came to restore what Adam lost. And so if what Adam lost was the garden, we need to have a really thorough and full understanding of the Garden of Eden so that we can know what all was lost, what all was restored back to us. And then we can walk in like boldness and the fullness of what God has restored for us in this time. And so we're going to start today just with a, a, a kind of quick overview, a, a brief, uh, I guess it's not super brief, kind of detailed overview of the Garden of Eden. And then we'll talk through like the systems of the garden and talk through some of the gems of the garden um, as we get further along. And so today our passage of scripture is going to be Genesis 2, verse 8 and 9, um, primarily verse 8. And so I'm reading out of the King James Version. And so it says, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and so we see here that God has created this garden um, he planted this garden he intentionally set aside this piece of land for the ma race of mankind that he was that he was starting and so he said is the Bible says that he planted this garden and then he put the man there that he had formed and so the first question that I really want to talk through is what is even the purpose for the Garden of Eden? Why does it even exist in the first place? And I'm going to give you an answer up front, and then we're going to go back and, and prove it out with the scripture. And so the Garden of Eden exists for man's dominion. That's the purpose. The Garden of Eden exists for man's dominion. And so let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. And so we see in verse 4, starting in verse 4, that these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. When they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth um, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And so the Garden of Eden exists for man's dominion. The Garden of Eden also exists so that God's system of growth could begin to operate in the earth. And so if we look at that passage of scripture there in verse four and then verse five, uh, the Bible says, or in verse six, the Bible says that every plant in the field on the earth and every herb of the field before it were before it grew because the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. So this teaches us that God's system required that two things operate before things began to grow in the earth. There had to be water and then there had to be man to till the ground. And so when God, um, when God created the garden of Eden and he put man there, um, we, the Bible says that the earth watered itself and then he formed the man like God's system of growth was now able to operate, uh, because the requirement of the criteria had been met, uh, through, through his implementation. And so we see where with man now created God, you know, man create, God has created man. And so this kind of puts him in a place where he has other things that he has to do now. Now he needs a place to put the man uh, so that the assignment can be fulfilled that he's given them. And so what was the assignment? The assignment was given to man in Genesis 1, verse 26 through 31. And so as we look at verse, starting at verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, 
multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which of the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and morning were the sixth day. And so the assignment that God has given man is given at the very beginning of this passage where he says, let us make God, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air and over all the cattle over the earth and all the creeping things on creeping on earth. And then it says in verse 28, it said, God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion. So we see here that we have dominion by being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing the earth and subduing it. And so that was like God had to create a place for man to do that. And so his chosen place was the Garden of Eden. And so God chose to plant this garden eastward in Eden to house the man or the race of people that he had created to fulfill this calling of dominion that he had assigned to them. And to set in, in motion the system of growth that we talked about earlier within the earth. So not only did man uh, did man's creation fulfill the the need for the, the fulfill the requirement for growth, but it also it also created you know the opportunity for dominion. And so the Garden of Eden was his chosen place. So let's go back and read Genesis two verse eight again, and then we're going to break it down. And so Genesis 2 verse 8, it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So let's break down all of these words. Uh, we're going to break down most of those words in that scripture. And so in the original language. And so if you, you didn't hear me say it before, um, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Greek. And so when it was translated, they translated it as best as they could. Uh, but some of the definitions, it's always good to go back to using like an interlinear concordance to go back to the original language and see what the original meaning of the word is. And so we're going to define the words planted, garden, eastward and Eden in the original language of Hebrew. And so planted one word for the one definition for the word planted in the original language is established. And so that word there, like uh, it could be inter used interchangeably with established and then garden. So a garden, the definition of a garden is an enclosure. And so essentially a garden was is something with boundaries. So it had like a fence around it or some type of barrier around it. Eastward. So eastward is an interesting word in the original language. It, it, it has a, a few meanings, but the meaning here means like a foretime or in the east or the front of something. And so um, Eden means pleasure. And so when we when we look at this passage of scripture, the Bible tells us that God planted a garden eastward in Eden. The, the interesting thing to me about that is that Eden was a place like there was an actual location of Eden, but God chose to carve out a specific area eastward in that place to put a garden. So there were that was pleasure because Eden means pleasure. There was pleasure within the garden, but there was also pleasure without the garden. And God's design was that we always experience pleasure inside the boundaries that he outlined for us. I, I got ahead of myself, um, but we'll we'll dive into that another week um, once as we get deeper in the text. So let me get back. So we have defined the words. Planted means established. Garden is an enclosure. Eastward is like a foretime. And then Eden is pleasure. And so if we rewrite that um, passage of that scripture verse, um, Genesis 2, 8, if we rewrite it using these original definitions, it gives us a deeper understanding. And so let's, let's, let's do that. God established, I'm going to be putting the re, re saying Genesis 2, 8, but putting the, the original definitions in. So God established an enclosed, a fenced in place of pleasure aforetime. And there he puts the man whom he had formed. So this shows us and this teaches us something about God, that God is extremely intentional with the decisions that he makes. Like he was extremely intentional with where he put the man 
for man's success ultimately, for man's dominion ultimately, and for man um, to set in motion um, the desires that he had, the desires that God had to to operate throughout the earth realm through him. And so this shows us that God was very intentional, extremely intentional with the decision of where he would place the man to fulfill the assignment that he had given him. And so finally, let's answer the question. I want to, I just want to make sure I make everything clear. I know we went through it, but what is the garden of Eden? So let's answer the question with all of the information that we've discussed today. The garden of Eden, if we wanted to define it, the garden of Eden is God's intentionally a four time established enclosed place of pleasure to house man, the race of man, mankind, to fulfill the assignment God gave for them to have dominion and to satisfy the requirements for his system of growth to begin operating in the earth. Wow. So. If you guys, this has been another, you know, Bible study. If you guys enjoy the content, um, please give me a like, a share, a subscribe, a comment. Um, and if there are any topics that you are interested about, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I'll, and I'll um, look into them and study them for future uh, videos. Look, I don't have all the answers. I'm not a Bible scholar by any stretch of the imagination, but I have access to the one who does have all the answers, the Holy Spirit. And so uh, Bible study, we'll see you guys again next time. Hey, it's Philip. Um, I love you guys, praying for you guys, and just wanting to make sure that we always see, seek, and serve the kingdom of God. We'll see you next time. Peace.